everyone, welcome back to another episode. Uh, we get to meet some locals. I have to dive under the warrior before she gets a big haul out for lots and lots of boat jobs. And then Maddie and I finally get to explore some of this beautiful, beautiful island. Uh, but first, something really cool happened. I was sat down below, uh, just reading my little book, and I heard a voice out in the dock uh, speaking to Maddie, who was up some bathing, reading her book, saying, uh, is the man of the boat around and I heard the voice and I was like oh I poked my head up I said hi and uh, it was people who follow my channel uh, what a lovely surprise Steve and Jude it was so nice to meet you thank you very much uh, for coming aboard and giving us some stories of your experiences so far been very helpful I love hearing other people's um, passages and sailing experience it helps me out because I still don't have much of a clue what I'm doing so yeah, it was, it was just to be recognised off the channel is something else, it really is. I've not got very many subscribers, so it, it was lovely. So uh, yeah, nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm going to go for a shower. You may be wondering, why am I putting together this little mini B scuba kit? Well, I uh, jumped in um, and checked out the bow thruster because it wasn't working very well and it was absolutely caked with barnacles. So I thought if the main prop is also bad, it was going to spell disaster leaving the pontoon to get round to the hard, so I donned all the kit and I jumped in to have a look. As you can see, the visibility is disgusting. It's kind of like in a bit of a mangrove. I managed to get down there, um, look at the state of that, absolutely disgusting. I don't think it, I mean, it wouldn't have been a major drama to get round, but it certainly wasn't gonna help. So time to give it a clean. That's it, it's uh, inspected, cleaned off as much of the barnacles. I, I put a pair of gloves out because I knew the barnacles just absolutely shred your fingers, but I didn't put them on stupidly. So I've got the, the small reef off of the propellers. There was, a, there was a, co a whole colony of underwater sea animals living on my prop. So I managed to get most of that off. Hopefully now it should get me round to the lift out bow thrusters i can't even get in there it's it's terrible um so i'm gonna go wash all my gear down and then lunch today is the day we are hauling out um, engines running don't know if you can hear i've got the boat pretty much ready um, i'm gonna pull her forward a touch uh because we've got a big cat next to us so i'm gonna give myself every fighting chance because i don't know how she's gonna move if she's gonna move because she's been sat here for a couple of months you saw the prop, how dirty it was, so I'm hoping that it still wants to propel us. Um, so yeah, we'll figure it out as we go, I guess. That's her in a resting spot. Um, so as you can see, just the bits where the straps were. So what Maddie and I are gonna do, give it a scrape, give it a clean, and then hopefully, I'm gonna might have to go buy some metal scrapers, but hopefully these plastic ones can get all the 
hard crap off before I give it a light sand and the whole bottom needs light sanding. So with any luck, might have this done by lunch. Yeah, I heard a bit of a sad story actually about the boat next to ours. So this boat here is up for sale. And unfortunately, the guy was found uh, dead out in the anchorage. Um, a bit sad, you know, all these solo sailors and I don't know how long he was on the boat for, but uh, makes you wonder, doesn't it, poor, poor fella? On that cheery note, let's get on with some work. We've cleaned that strip where the strops were. Maddie's now working away with the scraper, getting all the uh, worm tubes off. And I'm going to make a start and getting all the hard crustaceans off the prop so I can have a look to see how exactly I get the uh, blades off. Then I've got a flapper disc to clean it all, lube it up, and then hopefully start on the bow thruster. So this is Elvis, and uh, I've got him to help me with this rudder alignment after the orca hit it, if you remember episode 14. Um, and we've got a lot of port. Uh, so there's the port, Elvis has done a mark there. And then when we come over, <laughs> So that's midships, and then all we've got is that for starboard. So uh, we're gonna have a little look. I have made a start on the propeller. I've put some of that propeller cleaner on that you saw um, earlier in that spray bottle, and it brought quite a lot of the crud off. Um, I'll give it a proper clean in a bit. I just needed to get access to these Allen keys. So you can see I've already made a start. Taking one of the Allen keys off, which allows you to take out these pins so when you take the pin out what you're left with is just the one blade now these are each numbered as well they've got numbers on one two three so we should remember how they go back in um, I'll carry on taking these out and then I can start cleaning the boss and then the blades and then get in there that's going to come up lovely i think this might be a little too boisterous though so i might go across the road and get uh maybe like a 200 grip that might be a bit much i'll give it a go see how it comes out we got it nice and shiny nice and shiny um so maddie and i have worked together um we put the first one in just because before i filmed i wanted to see that it actually went in okay greasing up as we go along you can see all that grease in there and i'll get back to you when it's all back hopefully back together there we have it nice shiny greased up prop next up we have the bow thruster so far i've taken this bolt Allen key bolt out the middle of that side and around this side I have taken out this split pin which sits you can I don't know if you can see the little hole just there so the split pin was sat, sat through there and now I'm going to take out that Allen key bolt and then see what happens from there one thing I just stopped to ponder about is there was no split pin in this side and I figured maybe uh, there was a reason, you know, maybe only something went that way and then I realized I come and had a look and I could just about see a little hole there And I could feel a little hole on the top. So there's meant to have a split pin in this side also So I uh, need to go buy some split pins both the end uh, bolts out uh, And I'm just located this one under there. I'm in the process of taking out as well Hopefully that's just the holding one so I can then take off the propeller that bolt was the final bolt to come off, which allows me to take this off. Look at the state of that. I just want to take a second to appreciate the job Maddie has done. <laughs> Look at these bow thrusters. They're only plastic, so you can't do anything with a flapper wheel. So Maddie has painstakingly, by hand, I mean, I mean the growth you saw earlier, the growth that was on that, and she's managed to get it to that. Absolutely amazing. 
come to the end of the first day. Maddie's just finishing off a little bit of buffing. I have suitably burnt my legs, fantastic. And I'm only halfway down the port side with the sand in. I've still got to do the keel from there, back, the keel, the rudder. Update on the rudder. So they dropped the rudder. The rudder was out earlier. They thought it might have twisted, the stem might have twisted, as I explained. In fact, there's a stem. They thought that it may have twisted inside the rudder. That's this off this boat, obviously. It hadn't. Um, so we went back in trying to find the source and it was the simplest of jobs. There's a rudder stop. So you've got a uh, quadrant which moves port and starboard with the wires that go around it and the chain uh, further around on the wires. And um, there's a little, just a plastic stop that will sit. I'll, I'll demonstrate, it will sit in the middle inside the boat up on the top and when the quadrant moves it will hit it will stop port stop starboard so it just stops the rudder port and starboard the orca had hit it that hard what it had done is shifted that bit of plastic because on rails it's adjustable that's all it was so i'm probably going to get charged a couple of hundred dollars for a day's work um for something as simple as looting a couple of bolts and sliding the thing across however We've checked the rudder, it's out. So on the plus side, we know that the rudder's good, the rudder's dry, and I've got a shiny prop, greased up, ready to go. I reckon I can get another 15 knots out of that at least. Haha, <laughs> I wish. It's all the spot priming done. However, I've just been told by one of the uh, local guys who work in the yard, he knows, uh, I've already spoke to him yesterday, I said, uh, I'm putting, the, I'm putting a, a barrier coat on because I, the paint I've got on at the moment, the anti fall I've got at the moment is different to what I used last year when I was at home. It doesn't hold, so what you do is you put a barrier coat on, it looks like stuff on the bottom of that boat. And he just said that that is basically the primer. It will fill in, so I've just kind of wasted the last half hour. <laughs> However, you know, it's done. I'll let that dry, have a cup of coffee, and then Madeline and I will uh, get to painting. So earlier, I put all the masking tape on. Well, I started and a very kind, tall local lad who works here said, uh, I don't want to see you struggling. So he just come and took the tape and done the port side for me. Then he had a job, so I carried on on starboard. So that's all ready to go. Um, coffee and then barrier coat. Smile. So glad it's not warm. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. We could be in the tropics doing this. There we have it. That is a coat of primer barrier. So now the paint won't, the, the new anti-foul that's going to go on won't react. Um, I'd done a test patch yesterday up on the bow and um, it bubbled. It didn't on the keel, the keel's obviously metal, um, but where it's uh, fiberglass GRP on the, on the hull, it reacted. So I have to have this barrier paint. Um, so it goes on like so. I mean, it's pretty much ready. It's pretty much dry now. It's that warm, but we're going to uh, have some lunch, a cup of coffee, and then go for the first coat of anti foul then. And we have the first coat of anti foul going on. I've just been doing inside the bow thruster housing, and Maddie's cracking on, and then I catch her up. That's the first coat on. Uh, took exactly one gallon, one tin of that paint. So hopefully the other tin that I've got will do the second coat and under the patches because I don't think we need to put as much on. But yeah, this is it. It's looking good. The second coat is on. Just in time, it just had a bit of a downpour. So that's propeller clean, anode on. Um, I've refitted the old anode, there's still plenty of life in that one yet, so that's gone back on. The bow thrust is back in. Some new split pins on both, Maddie's done a great job there. Up 
After all this hard work, Maddie and I spent the next day exploring the nearby Pigeon Island. In the middle of the 16th century, a French pirate used Pigeon Island as his base, but between 1779 and 1782, Admiral George Rodney took over Pigeon Island and built Fort Rodney. To establish clear viewpoints, he ordered all the trees on Pigeon Island to be cut down, and from the higher peak, Signal Hill, Rodney was able to observe the French naval base of Fort Royal on Martinique. In 1782, Admiral Rodney sailed from Pigeon Island to confront the French fleet, which he defeated in the Battle of the Saints. Uh, during the Second World War, the US actually used one of the peaks uh, as a signal station. First thing this morning, the yard, one of the yard boys came and moved all the stands. I sanded. Uh, Maddie then came down and put this primer barrier coat on. Good thing with being in the Caribbean is everything dries very quick. So I'm pretty much ready to stick the first coat of uh, anti-foul on, leave that a few hours, and then um, the second one. I've all paid up my bill, um, cleared out with customs because we are launching four o'clock this afternoon. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it yesterday, I had a nightmare. The, uh, I, I don't know why, I just by chance checked the battery. So I've got on my battery monitor, um, I can see what charge my uh, house batteries are. The solar's always topping them up and what charge my engine battery is, the starter and uh, starter battery. And that's always usually hanging around 12 to 13 volt, over 12 volts, 12 and a half to 13, which is, you know, as it should be. And then I checked and it was down to eight volts. Now I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it's just an old battery. It just might need replacing. So I bought one, it's on charge at the moment over in the Chandlery. Should be on charge overnight, but it's been Easter weekend. They've only just opened. 
I'm launching this afternoon. They're going to put it on charge for a couple of hours or a few hours. I'm going to fit it and then that should be good um, to start the engine when I get launched. I'm going to spend the night in the anchorage um, and then in the morning, fingers crossed, it is just a battery and there's not some parasitic drain. There shouldn't be because everything runs off the house batteries. There's no lights that run off it or anything. So yeah, we shall see. Uh, I'm going to go do the first coat of anti-foul now and then I shall film uh, later on when I get the battery. Old battery, new battery, new battery, old battery. Time to go back in. The battery problem's still not sorted. I'm losing voltage on it for some reason. The solar usually keeps it level at just over 13 volts and it's just dropping all the time. So I've got a feeling I'm going to be back in the marina tomorrow. But I'll keep an eye on it overnight. Well, not overnight, in the morning I'll see what it's done. So rather than go to anchor, I'm not very happy with this battery situation and I won't be able to rest well in the anchorage knowing that I may have to jump start the new battery to get in. So what we've done is there's the lift in the distance. We've just motored across here and put ourselves in. This is the very first, if you watched a few episodes ago, this was the very first slip that we come into. Um, and then we went into the actual marina. I'm just going to ask to stay here tonight. It's not the best, it's right next to the main road, but it's going to give me peace of mind. I can check the battery tomorrow. Um, if I'm happy, uh, then yeah, we're ahead. Good morning. Uh, check the battery, it's good. It's held its charge overnight, so that's great. Um, getting the boat ready, uh, Maddie and I are going to slip the lines. We are going to head uh, out there into the bay there's an anchorage further around to the left or pigeon island is round to the right uh, i think we're gonna anchor at pigeon island for the day make sure all systems are good and working thanks so much for watching um, join us next time to explore martinique um, and it's going to be the first sail that we've done in a while as well so that'll be interesting make sure that uh, everything's okay there if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a comment. Um, really helps support the channel. Uh, if you're not already, subscribe. Um, and if you hit the notification bell, then what that does is it lets you know when I post the next uh, episode. Thanks again, guys. Catch you later.